definitely different this year, but I'm so thankful that God is the same. I'm so glad that nothing takes God by surprise. That is something that I say very often. Uh, anyone that knows me has probably heard me say that so many times, that nothing takes God by surprise. And uh, this year we are definitely in need of a refreshing uh, and today our focus has been on missions. And aren't you thankful for the mission field? Uh, it is everywhere you go. You don't have to be in just one place or another. But as Brother Anders had already said just a few moments ago, that your mission field is wherever you are. And uh, the Lord had um, give this thought to me uh, that I'll get into in just a moment. But I was thinking about the mission field and how important that it is. And I thought, Lord, how can we reach the whole world? How can we, in small numbers, reach the whole world? And I thought about this, and I prayed about it, because I, I wanted a vision for missions. And the Lord answered me in two different ways. And the first way he answered me, he reminded me that he has never needed a large number to get the work done. Uh, actually, most of the time, he uses the smallest of the small to get the work done. And the second way that he tried to help teach me this, I'm going to go into a little bit. When we read in the New Testament about everywhere Jesus went, crowds followed him everywhere that he went. Uh, he bid the disciples to come unto him, but they weren't his mission field. They were the ones to be trained for his mission field, to be the laborers in the field. And I thought, how long have I been in training for the mission field? The disciples got a little over three years, and I started to meditate about how long I've been serving the Lord, how long I've been under training for the mission field, and what have I accomplished during this training. And then I started to put this message together, and I realized the Lord showed me that I have not been working the mission field the most effective way, which is His way. Instead of saying, how can we reach the whole world, I should be saying, Lord, how can I reach one? If we can lo have love and compassion to make a difference in one, then the whole world can be reached. The title that I have for tonight is Compassion Makes the Difference. And before you uh, get your Bible out and you start going to the book of Jude, I will not be reading from the book of Jude tonight. Uh, actually, I will be going to the book of John. In John chapter 8, starting with verse 1, it says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again unto the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery, in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw no, none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. The religious people brought a sinner to Jesus. They were conscious of her distress, but had no desire to alleviate it. They were more concerned with seeing punishment than mercy. Those religious people made no difference in her life. If anything, they would have made a worse impact on her. The definition of compassion is sympathetic, sympathetic consciousness of others distressed together with a desire to alleviate it. 
Jesus had a sympathetic conscience of her distress and a desire to alleviate it. Jesus made the difference. Compassion will move you to alleviate it. Jesus was very conscious of the needs of the people and he moved with compassion to alleviate it. Compassion makes a difference. Most people can only see what is right in front of them. If it's out of sight, then it's out of mind. And this happens very easily. A lot of times we don't even realize it. Uh, we have good intentions to do things. We have good intentions to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have good intentions to help someone that is in need. We have good intentions uh, to go and visit. We have good intentions to make a phone call, to send a card, to shoot somebody a text. We have good intentions. But the things is, the reason this happens, uh, that it doesn't get done, is because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind for a lot of people. I'm guilty of this myself. And I thought, Lord, why? Why does it have to be right before us? before we realize that there needs to be something done because we're only looking with our natural eyes. In natural sight, you can see a picture of a starving animal and move with compassion to help. Uh, people are very good at this. They'll put a video of starving animals and a beautiful song playing in the background, and it moves us to compassion, we will donate money to help them. Uh, you can see someone struggling physically, and you can move with compassion to help them. You could see a, a family uh, that has low funds for the month, and you can know of a financial situation, and because you see it, you're moved, and, and you're, you're able to help, and there's nothing wrong with these things at all. Uh, but the thing is, is that there's an animal starving all the time, whether you see it on TV or not. There's people that are in need all the time, whether you actually see it or not. So why is it that we have to see it before we do something about it? Because we're watching with our natural eyes and not our spiritual ones. The spiritual sight happens through compassion. Compassion goes so much further than what the natural eyes can see. Compassion is moved by what the spiritual eye can see. The spiritual eye. In order for us to be able to look at things spiritually, we have to be so connected to the Lord. We have to stay connected to him to be able to see what he sees because I don't have, I don't know his thoughts. I don't know his ways all the time, but I know that his ways are greater than my ways. And I know that he sees and knows things that I do not. And if I can stay connected with him, then I can see the way he sees. The Pharisees, the religious leaders could only see with their natural eye and not the spiritual ones. Their natural eyes could only see her sin and not her soul. Their natural eyes wanted her to be punished. That was the desire. I think about that often and I think about how sad that is. That, that the religious people of that time had a greater desire for a woman to be stoned to death than for the Lord to have mercy on her and to help her in her situation. Lord, help us not to be a Pharisee. Lord, help us not to be ready to cast stones at one another, but to have so much compassion that we are moved by each other and that we can see their soul and their need for help. People cry out all the time for mercy, but they don't say, I need mercy. You know what they do? That They're addicted to drugs. And that is them crying out with their soul, I need mercy, I need compassion, I need help. That is what they're saying. But when we are looking with the natural eyes, all we can see is the sin. We need the compassion of the Lord to be able to see past that. And, and unfortunately, we lose sight of that. Unfortunately, we want to see everything with the natural. These Pharisees, they went uh, to the Lord and they wanted something done. They wanted something done right then. 
They did not want any lag time. And he tried to just ignore them at first by writing in the sand. And, and everybody has their speculations of what he, they think that he might have been writing. I don't know what he was writing, but I know that every single one of them, the scripture says that they were convicted. And they one by one walked away. And then Jesus said, asked her, is there any, and I'm paraphrasing, is there anybody here that's condemning you? You see, condemnation and conviction is two totally different things. Conviction comes from the Holy Ghost, and it doesn't need a man to say anything. That is what conviction does. A uh, conviction is when, uh, when you can, uh, when you can know the truth. When you know the truth, and the Holy Ghost comes in and He reveals that to you. And not everybody knows the truth, but I was thinking about my own personal experience. I had so many people years ago that tried to, to show me the error of my ways. And I knew them. I didn't need anybody to point them out to me. I knew my faults. I knew these things. But when the Holy Ghost spoke, man didn't need to say a word. Man didn't need to say anything. Well, these Pharisees wanted to condemn her. They did not want to show any, any mercy or anything of the sorts. They did not go and say, Lord, Lord, if we, if we give her over to the people, they will stone her. Lord, what should we do? No, they went with the intent of her to be stoned. Now, we have to be careful that we don't have this spirit about us today. We have to be careful that we don't have this spirit within the church today, that when someone does fault, and look, sometimes it's not even real fault. Sometimes it's just assumptions. But we need to be careful when, the, when these things happen that we are not stoning each other. We may not actually pick up physical stones, but there's a lot of stoning that goes on very often. Lord, help us <laughs> that we want to have compassion on one another. Because I'm on this journey to make it to heaven, and I want to take someone with me. I want someone to go with me, and if I can make the difference in one then I can make the difference in the whole world. But the Pharisees could only see with their natural eyes and not their spiritual ones. Their natural eyes could only see her sin and not her soul. In order to work our mission fields, you must be able to see with spiritual eyes. You must be able to see because you're going to come across people that are not going to want the message of Jesus Christ. And you're going to have to love them. And you are going to have to have patience with them. And you are going to have to work with them. Because not everybody receives the message and they get saved immediately. And they're gung-ho and they want to work for the Lord. Uh, some of us took a little bit longer than that. Compassion is in very short supply in this world today. Watch the news. Get on social media. There's not a whole lot of compassion for people right now. People want to blame. People want to accuse. People want to make assumptions over what they think they know. People do not want to have compassion. Why is this? Because compassion is the most selfless act that there is. To have compassion, you must be 100% invested into others and not your own. I'll read that again. To have compassion, you must be 100% invested into others and not your own. Uh, there is lots of needs that people have. Uh, no doubt that there's not. But if I'm so focused on myself, I cannot have compassion on others. 
I cannot do it. If I'm so self-consumed on how I'm not being treated fairly, if I'm so self-consumed about how it didn't go my way, if I'm so self-consumed, oh, nobody has it as bad as me. If I'm so self-consumed on how nothing's going right in this year that it seems, then I cannot help anyone else. Not at all. I'm no good to them because I cannot have compassion at all. Jesus, let me, I'm going to switch for just a second. I apologize to my interpreter. I wanted to read this little thing that come out of an article that I had read about compassion. Research on anxiety and depression tells us that tense and unhappy states are highly self-focused. During stress or sadness, we are focused on things that are going wrong in our lives. And so what compassion does is it makes us happy because it causes us to broaden our perspective beyond ourselves. You cannot have compassion for others if you're self-consumed. You cannot have compassion on yourself unless you have a deeper relationship with the Lord. Uh, the evidence of sanctification is joy. True joy is when you are doing all that you can for others. That, that is just complete, true joy. Jesus was able to have extreme compassion because his concern was others and not on himself. Uh, he was the ultimate example of this because the very ones that spit upon him and beat him is the very ones that he, he wanted the Lord to forgive. Compassion. Compassion is not compromise of sin. That's not what it is. You see people that uh, work with people for a very long time. Some people get wore out with that, and they think it's an acceptance of the sin. No, it's not. It is just loving them through the sin. It is just compassion. Compassion is love and prayer on legs. I've heard people say uh, for years and years that we need to put legs on our prayers. Well, compassion is when you put love and prayers on legs and you go out and do a work. Compassion isn't words, but it's action. When Jesus met the woman at a well, it was a Samaritan woman. This Samaritan woman was hated of the Jews. He was moved with compassion. Compassion made a difference, and she was no longer the same. A Samaritan woman. This woman at the well was never the same, but her story doesn't end there. If you keep reading down in those scriptures, and I'm just paraphrasing this story, we're not going to turn there. But when you read about the woman at the well, and you go through that, after uh, the Lord uh, ministers to her, and after the Lord uh, shows her about herself, the scripture says that she told everyone. The scripture says that she went and said, come see a man. Uh, and she was telling other Samaritans about what a Jew done for her. And I, I thought about that for just a second. The Samaritans and the Jews, they hated each other. Uh, they didn't want any parts. They would go out of their way just to avoid the path to go by each other. There was extreme hate there. And I thought about this. In the world today, there's a lot of hate going on right now. There is so much hate in this world right now. And it is uh, just a result of the prince of this world having a field day with people. And it's causing so much hate. The Samaritans and the Jews, they hated each other in the same sense of the way some will hate each other today. They would avoid each other. But a Jew, a Jew done something for that Samaritan woman. He showed her of her ways. In today's sense, we're going to say that she received salvation because a Jew ministered to her. It was Jesus Christ, and he made a difference uh, because he had compassion on her. He did not go to her and say, woman, you need to get saved. You're in adultery. He didn't do that, but he had so much love and compassion for her that he made the difference. He made the difference. And she went and said, come see a man. 
Come and see a man. That is how the word of Jesus can be spread across the world with a small number. You see, he made the difference in one, and she went and told everybody, come see a man. Come see a man. She told the ones, she told the Samaritans who hated the Jews about something a Jew done for her. Now, isn't that remarkable? The, Jesus being a Jew didn't have to run to the Samaritans and say, I'm a good Jew. I don't hate you. He didn't have to do that. All he did was make an impact on one. And she ministered for him. She was an ambassador for Jesus Christ because he moved with compassion and not condemnation. You may not physically go anywhere. You may not physically go anywhere but your local town. But if you can make a difference through Jesus Christ, others will share it. When Jesus told people not to tell, they told anyway. They told anyway. Mark 7 and 36 says, And he charged them that they should not tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it. You cannot keep the love and compassion of Jesus Christ quiet. You can't. It does something to you. If you've had a real experience with the same Jesus Christ that saved me, if you've had the same experience with that love and compassion that sweeps over you, you cannot keep it quiet. You have to tell somebody, come see a man. Come and see a man. There's a whole world searching for love and compassion right now. And they don't realize that's what they're searching for. I heard someone say years ago that people will flock to hear the truth. And I thought that might have held true years ago. But if you are ever out talking and ministering to people, most people think they have the truth. Most people think that what they have is the truth and they have no idea that they don't have truth at all. But there is something that I have found that everyone is searching for, and that is love. Everyone is searching for it. They may not say that they're searching for love, but that's exactly what they're searching for. And if we don't have it here, if they cannot find love right here, if they cannot find compassion right here, then where else are they going to go? Amen. Where else can they go if they cannot find it right here in the church of God? Where else are they going to go? There was a minister years ago in North Carolina, Brother Laxton, he used to say that you could intertwine the word God and the word love. And if that's true, and I know that it is, then we can call ourselves the church of love. Now, can people enter in and, and be able to relate to that? Can people come into our midst and say, that is a church of love? Because love is what makes the difference. Yes, they'll hear the truth. I, when I came to the church years ago, I was not searching for truth at all. I didn't want truth, actually. I didn't really care anything about the truth at all. But I was searching for love, and I did not realize it. But they just loved me. They loved me when I looked like a sinner. Because I wasn't saved. <laughs> we shouldn't expect them to look, to, to look a certain way if they're not that way. But I didn't look like it. I didn't act like it because I wasn't going to put on a show. I, I didn't do those things. But they loved me. They just loved me. Not one person ever tried to condemn me or try to change me or try to tell me you can't do this or you can't do that or you shouldn't do that. They just loved me. 
and they had so much compassion in the state that I was in, and it done something for me. It made me love them back, and I didn't even realize it. I wanted what they had. And truth came. It took me a little while. I, it took me a little while to learn. It didn't just come, you know, that quick for me. But that love and that compassion would stick with me even when I left it. Everywhere else I go, I never could feel that same love and that same compassion. And the Lord drawed me back to it. It made a difference. Compassion of the saints made a difference. Had there been a, a condemning spirit, had there been a spirit of, if you've got to get this or you need to move on, had that been the spirit that they would have showed to me, I would have never come back. But they done their part. They loved me. They had compassion on me. The truth was preached. You see, there wasn't compromise, but they just loved me. And in doing that, the Holy Ghost was able to minister with that conviction. And when he done it, they never had to say a word. But they just loved me. We must be able to offer them something different. We have to be able to work the mission field to offer them something that no one else has. Other people have wonderful big programs. Other people are able to do so much more with funds than we can do. But there should be something that draws them to us that nobody else has. And that is the genuine love of Jesus Christ. And has compassion on people that desperately need it. They need that. I'll read one part of this again. And I don't think I'm going to go, I'm not going to finish the rest of that. Because I just don't think it's fitting. But there's a whole world searching for love and compassion. And they don't realize it. And if we don't have it here. Where else are they going to go? Where else are they going to go? Lord, help us that we have so much compassion and love that we are running to the mission fields in our local towns, that we are making a difference with our family and with our co-workers, that they will know that we love them, that we love them and that we are willing to roll our sleeves up and to work with them because their souls are worth it. Their souls are worth it. Tonight, their souls are worth it. I don't know about you, but I know that I need more compassion than what I have now. It is so easy to get wrapped up in the things that are going on in this world and start to get calluses on your heart and start to get tough skin. But that's not going to make the difference at all. But compassion will definitely make a difference in showing them love. Because this is their safe haven. This should be their refuge of places to go. Because we do need a refreshing during this time. And Lord, help us to have the compassion that we need. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, as we come before you at this time. Oh Lord, help us tonight. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. Lord, you can search our hearts tonight, Lord. You were able to do what man cannot do, Lord. You were able to come down into the mist, Lord, and to touch our hearts. Lord, let us see with spiritual eyes tonight what you see. Not with the natural eyes, but with the spiritual eyes. Those spiritual eyes, Lord, will help us look beyond, the Lord, what the natural can see. And it will help us to see that soul. That soul that needs Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, the soul that is discouraged, that needs to be uplifted. And to help us see that as well, Lord. And to help us be a good steward to Lord Jesus. Lord, and to help us, to Lord, to make a difference. Oh, Lord, if we can make the difference in one, Lord, then we can change the world. Oh, Lord, help me tonight to make that difference in just one. Oh, Lord, don't let, let me get so wrapped up. 
that we cannot see this world, the Lord. They react in violence and hate, and they react, the Lord Jesus, with callousness, Lord. But if you can touch us, the Lord, if we can see with the spiritual eyes, oh, Lord, if we can make a difference in one, oh, Lord, how that one can be an ambassador for you. Lord, and if that one can make a difference in one, then that one will be an ambassador for you as well. Lord, help us tonight. Lord, help us to have a desire to win one. Oh, Lord, that it will be a chain reaction across the church. Oh, that the whole world will hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. That they will see, the Lord, that there is so much love and compassion in this world that they never knew, and it is right here right in your church oh lord help us tonight lord soften our hearts to lord tonight that we would be workers for you workers for you oh lord touch each one lord tonight lord we praise your name to lord for everything that is good oh lord we're so thankful to lord jesus for everything that you've done for us lord don't let us lose sight of that lord don't let us lose sight the lord of what you've done for us lord that we could have compassion on others Lord, help us tonight, Lord, in your precious, sweet, holy name.